lot of people they have this thing that in mark scheme they have shown only two three steps uh, why are we showing all these steps because the mark scheme is written by the examiner and the examiner is not getting a grade for the mark scheme the mark scheme is primarily for the teachers now some people they just get started with the calculator even before reading the question i mean that is a very very wrong approach first of all write down all the necessary detail use a calculator and then get the answer you don't have to flip through all the pages in your notebook or register for all the notes everything should be on single sheets of paper one concept on a single piece of paper, maybe in one corner. Uh, so now let's talk about S1. What is S1? S1 is the component that deals with statistics. We have topics such as probability, probability distribution, that's also known as DRV, discrete random variable. And under the banner of DRV, we have two major topics. One of them is called binomial probability distribution and the other one is geometric probability distribution. And then we have permutation, we have combination, then we have normal distribution. And what else is there? Yes, there is the representation of data, which is a little bit related to different diagrams, such as uh, stem plot, box plot, frequency distribution, histogram, cumulative frequency distribution, cumulative frequency graph, and so on. And it's also related to some uh, calculation things such as mean and variance and coding. So now uh, S1 is the first thing, the first optional thing that people do usually in the AS level, but there are, there are certain people that they give S1 with P3 also. So now when we look at the S1 paper, this is paper five before 2020, it was known as paper number six, but now it's paper number five. And I'm looking at the February, March 2020 paper, and there is only one variant in March. And by the way, when we talk about the number of variants in a year, so there is one variant of March, three variants of May, June paper, and three variants of November paper. So altogether it's seven. So seven papers in a year, every single variant is worth practicing. A lot of people, they ask this question, how many yearly past papers we should do? I think minimum 14, that means two years paper, or maximum, there is no limit, but I think if they solve 21 past papers, that's more than enough practice, provided you have already studied uh, the topical in great detail. So you have solved topical questions from at least 10 years or something like that. Now, when we look at the instructions, the instructions are more or less the same as we see for P1 or P3. I'm just going to highlight the major details. That is about uh, this thing. You should use a calculator where appropriate. So that's the main thing that I want to focus on because in probability, a lot of working could be in fractions. Whether that fraction is related to uh, probability, whether it's related to probability distribution, which is also known as DRV. So a lot of fractions are involved there, but definitely when there is a need for a calculator, we'll be using a calculator. The second thing that I want to emphasize is that show all necessary working clearly. That means if you are solving a question related to permutation combination, so write down specifically that you are using NPR 7C4 or 7P4 for that matter. No marks will be given for unsupported answer for a calculator. Like do not assume anything. Do not assume that the examiner knows exactly what you are doing because the examiner wants to see whatever you are writing on the paper. So that medium is paper and you have your pen and that should be a black or blue color. For diagrams, you will be using a pencil. So the bottom line of the story is do not assume anything, show everything clearly. And the best thing is that you should go through the exam reports at least for a particular year. 
a March examiner report, a June exam report, a November exam report. So go through it and you will exactly understand what I'm focusing on. The examiner wants to see quadratic factorization, simultaneous equation, multiplication of fractions, division of fractions, addition, subtraction. Uh, for example, for mutually exclusive event, yes, you should state the probability of A intersection B is zero. For independent, the intersection should be a product of individual probability. So all this thing should be specifically stated. And related to this, when we're talking about the non-exact numerical answers, they should be given correct to three significant figures. The angle thing is not applicable in S1. So let me erase this thing, unless a different level of accuracy is specified in the question. And the total mark for this paper is 50. And the time for this paper is one hour, 15 minutes. Now, what I would like you to do is that Divide your paper into two halves, 45 minutes and 30 minutes. The usual five questions, the moderate ones, they should be done thoroughly in 45 minutes and that is perfectly achievable. And the 30 minutes should be reserved for two questions that are a level up from the moderate question. So it could be moderate, it could be slightly difficult, and that would depend on your expertise. Maybe someone is finding a probability and permutation combination more difficult. So for them, these two questions should be done at the end. First of all, secure your marks. Do the five usual questions in 45 minutes so that you are done with five questions and you are only left with two questions and out of these two questions maybe half is moderate and half is difficult so you are only playing around with this the marks for half the difficult part and that's not a big deal because you have already done the easy part the moderate part already done so you have secured most of the marks over here and the difficult part working is left for the end. So now you have a peace of mind that you have already secured this many marks and now you can be a little bit adventurous with the difficult part. Now this working makes a lot of sense. So now in this question, in this paper, I'll show you which parts according to me is slightly more difficult. Now let's look at this question. It says the 40 members of a club include these two people. All 40 members will travel to a concert. 35 members will travel in a coach. Five will travel in a car. R will be in coach. S will be in the car. In how many members? In how many ways can the members who will travel in the coach be chosen? So now this is about NCR and NCN minus R. This concept is there. And the working, as you can see, is not that much. It's for three mark but the working requires a lot of thinking and that's a trademark of S1. That S thinking is the first priority as compared to P1 in which working was a lot. In S1, working is lesser, thinking part is more. And then there is this question and that is uh, coming after the 2020 paper. And yes, this is a 2020 exam that geometric distribution was included and binomial was also there and that is in a particular question. Both things are coming in a particular question so you have to uh, realize which part belongs to which. An ordinary fair die is thrown repeatedly until, so now these are the two keywords, repeatedly because the number of trials are not fixed. In binomial, number of trials are fixed. In geometric, number of trials are not fixed. That means this is a geometric probability question. And then secondly, this word, until you achieve success, that means this is geometric. So probability of one, probability of six, probability of one or six, that comes out to be this. And then you state which distribution is the variable following. And then you calculate each probability individually, and then you will add it up. Over here, on another occasion, the die is thrown three times. Now there is a fixed number of trial. That means we are talking about binomial. And uh, this question over here, the weights of apple of a certain variety are normally distributed with mean this thing. 22% uh, have apple weighing, my person bold now, 
The weights of apple of a certain variety are normally distributed with mean 82 grams. 20% of these apples have a weight greater than 87 grams. Find the standard deviation. So now in normal distribution, there are two things that, come, that you come across. The first thing is, you are given everything and you are asked for a probability. Or something is there, for example, mean is there, probability is there, and you are asked for standard deviation. This is known as back solving. That means you have a table, you have a probability, find the corresponding z-value and work it out. So now all the step is necessary. A lot of people, they have this thing that in mark scheme, they have shown only two, three steps. Uh, why are we showing all these steps? Because the mark scheme is written by the examiner and the examiner is not getting a grade for the mark scheme. The mark scheme is primarily for the teachers. Yes, students can also have a look, but the student is supposed to show all the working that is explicitly mentioned on the top page of this exam paper. Every exam paper that is other, that is also emphasized in the exam report. So show all the necessary working. Find the probability weight of a randomly chosen apple differs from the mean. Now differs could be in this direction, could be in this direction. And this time we are looking for the probability. This is what I have labeled the working that needs to be done. When we use the symbol phi, this means a reading off from the uh, Z table. So reading directly for this particular value, whatever this comes out to be, whatever this comes out to be, find this, find this, add both the probabilities and subtract one. So there are seven rules. And by the way, make sure whatever rules that you have studied, you jot it down in one place so that you don't have to flip through all the pages in your notebook or register for all the notes. Everything should be on single sheets of paper. One concept, on a single piece of paper, maybe in one corner, one whole chapter could be easily done on two sides of an A4 white paper. Make sure that you get these things ready so that when you're solving the paper and you have to look for reference, you just pick out the piece of paper, look at the main thing and then continue with the work. So when I'm talking about these seven rules, I'm talking about using the Z value to find probability. And when I talk about the back solving, there are two rules. Make sure the probability is at least 50% because that's the minimum probability in a Z table. And then if Z has a lesser sign, Z value is positive. If Z has a greater sign, Z value is negative. So these are the two rules that I'm talking about. Now, so far, these two questions are perfectly easy. Actually, three questions. There is this first one, the one for three mark, and then there is three and three and two, that's eight mark. And then there is this one that is three and four, that is seven mark. So these three are easy and they can easily be done in maybe like 15 minutes. Now, let's look at this. Uh, another question. The first one was combination. This is permutation. Richard has three blue candles, two red, six green. The candles are identical. Now look for the keywords. When they are saying identical, that means there is something in the denominator that you need to take care of. He arranges. What does the word arrange means? Arrange means it's a concept of permutation. Selection, it's with combination. It's all about the vocabulary. It's all about translation from English to your mother tongue if it's that that is different from English and then it's about maths so it's about the translation it's about reading it's about comprehension it's about getting the numbers to start with and then you get the answer so now I have worked this out and then once I have worked it out now I'll use the calculator now some people they just get started with the calculator even before reading the question I mean that is a very very wrong approach first of all write down all the necessary detail use a calculator and then get the answer and then the second part, find the number of different arrangements of the 11 candles if all the blue candles are together and the red, red candles are not together. Now, two concepts are over there. The first one is the concept in which you put things in a box and you consider the box as one unit. And the second one is the spacing concept. So two concepts are being asked. Usually they are asked separately, but this time they were asked together also. And uh, this question, again, I would consider it moderate because a lot of questions are coming this way. And if you are finding this difficult, that means you definitely have to go back and go over this concept. Question number five, 70% of the adults own a car. Now, a lot of people, they have this thing that uh, they have already asked something about binomial. 
and can they ask again about binomial? Yes, they have asked. Find the probability number of adults in the sample who own a car is less than six. That is a simple binomial. And a lot of space is there, so you will never run out of space provided you have a sharp thinking skill. Now, this is a random sample of 120 adults from this town is chosen. Use an approximation. What is the approximation that you know of? That is normal approximation to binomial. Make sure you justify the scenario. NP greater than 5, NQ greater than 5. If that is the case, then the mean is NP. Then the variance is NPQ. Write out things very, very explicitly. Make sure that you do the continuity correction. Whenever you change from a discrete probability distribution to a continuous one, you have to do continuity correction. And in order to do continuity correction, use a number line. That's the easiest way to get started. Then there is the probability tree diagram. This is question number six. And um, this is like taking care of the denominator, taking care of the numerator. I have used full color over here, which definitely you cannot use in the exam. But for explanation purposes, whenever you are studying yourself, make sure you use different colors in order to understand the concept a bit better. And uh, some of the working is shown over here. Now, this one was also a moderate question. And in this paper, the last question is about frequency distribution and cumulative frequency. Usually, uh, this is something moderate. It is still moderate, but it's coming at last. So it's not necessary that the last question will always be difficult. Sometimes slightly more difficult could be in the middle of the paper. So maybe the permutation combination related with the together and the space out thing, that was kind of difficult for some people, but it came in between. So if you find it difficult, leave it for now and then come back to it later. Now over here, uh, take care of the class boundaries. Cumulative frequency graph, the upper class boundary is there, the cumulative frequency is there, and then you plot this thing. Uh, cumulative frequency is based upon the concept of less than. So for example, 40% of these fish have a length D or more, use your graph to estimate. So take it easy, understand the concept. 40% have a length of D or more, therefore 60% have a length of D or less. So basically 60% of 150 is 90. Go to 90, touch the graph, read of the value, that is D. And then uh, you have to estimate the variance. Now all this working needs to be shown. This formula needs to be used. So now when we have gone over this paper, you can see that S1 is not so difficult. Some people, they overemphasize on S1. Some people, they overemphasize on P1. Uh, yes, you should not consider S1 to be very easy, but at the same time, you should not take P1 for granted. Because sometimes what I observe is that when the breakup or the result comes, people are getting a higher grade in S1 because they were more fearful of that. And because of overconfidence, they got a lower grade in P1. So you have to balance things out. And uh, topical to a certain extent, daily papers, definitely you have to try out as much as possible. The timing, the approach of the paper, what working needs to be shown, that is all what I've explained over here. Just to make sure that in the last minute of the preparation, you do it very, very well so that you get your desired grade.